So let's talk about principal stresses and directions in the earth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a large chunk of the earth out. And I'm going to plop a coordinate system down on it. So my coordinate system, in this case, is going to have x3 going into the earth, and then x1 and x2 in the plane of the earth. And I always use right-handed coordinate systems to make your life easier. Remember right-handed coordinate systems? So Use your right hand. Mm -hmm. it's, it's useful for taking cross products, right? So if I want to know what the cross product of x1 cross x2, right? So I just stick my right hand in the, in the direction of x1 and curl my fingers, and my thumb will point in the direction of x3, right? So x1 cross x2 gives me x3, and it goes down into the earth, not out. Oh, and if you use your right hand, it'll always work. It's like a huge pet peeve of mine. I've actually seen professors give talks, and they have left-handed coordinate systems on their slides, and I want to just stand up and yell at them. <laughs> anyway, uh, so if I, I take that um, coordinate system, and I let's look at it this way, and here's the equations written here. Okay, so remember this is just a little half space, a little idealized half space that I cut out of the earth. Now, <clears throat> the entire surface of the earth is in contact with what? Hmm? No, no, the surface of the earth that we're standing on. It's in contact with what? Well, I want to, like I'm waving my hands through right now. Air, air, okay. Except in the oceans, it's not in contact with, earth, with air, it's in contact with water, okay. Air and water are both, I'm going to call them fluids, they're both fluids, okay. Do you, do you know, if you know anything about fluids, you know that fluids cannot impart any shear stresses, right? So, you know, if, if I uh, spill some water on the floor here, I don't rip across the, it doesn't rip the tile off, right? You know, it just glides along because they don't, fluids don't impart shear stresses. Now, what I'm saying is very idealized. I'm not, if you're in a hurricane, there's 100 miles an hour winds, there's some boundary layer on the surface, there might be a little shear stress there. And, but it's nowhere near enough stress to cause the motion of tectonic plates. Right? So what we're talking about here is it's negligible in the sense of we're talking about the motion of the tectonic plates. Right? So fluid do not impart enough shear stress to cause the motion of the tectonic plates. Okay. Therefore, any shear stress, and you know, in a stress tensor, you, you only have normal and shear. The normals are on the diagonal, and the shears are the cross terms on the off diagonal. So what I'm saying here is because my x1 and x2 directions are in the surface of the earth, and there's no shear up there, they have to be zero. Those, any cross term that has a 1 or a 2 in it has to be zero. So that includes uh, you know, this one and this one. And because then uh, symmetry, that would also include this one, this one, this one, and this one. Uh, I'm sorry.
Yeah, I think, okay. It was okay the first time. All right. So if we then um, look at this last equation, I'm also going to, at the same time, I'm going to um, ignore all of the inertia terms. I'm going to say they're also negligible. Because, again, with respect to the motion of the Earth, there's not a lot of inertia. Now, if you're doing, like, earthquake mechanics, you can't do this, right? But we're talking about stresses that evolved over thousands of years or hundreds of thousands of years that didn't involve any inertia. Yeah? Can you explain that one or two sentence about the wrong about reading backwards? Well, again, um, if you, if you imagine there's a, a wind blowing directly in the x2 direction, so there's no component in the x1. The wind is only blowing in the x2. Okay. That doesn't impart any shear stress on the ground. Okay. So anything with a, with a 2 in it and a 3, the, you know, the ground is in the 3 direction, so anything with a 2 in it, uh, in, I can I can cross out those terms. Anything with a two and a three, I can cross out. Um, then have the same s thought experiment for the one direction. Okay, same same idea. Anything with a one and a three in it, uh, I'm going to cross out. But I just realized what I was trying to say. Th these these I cannot cross out. So if anything with a one and a three or a two and a three, I can cross out. <laughs> no. Um, I don't think of how to explain it. Again, I mean, that was the best thought experiment I have. If I have a wind, right, or a fluid motion that's only in one direction, so, you know, the wind is blowing this way or that way, that is not imparting any shear stress on the earth. And the shear stress that would be between a wind in, in the blowing in the x2 direction and anything in the earth, which is in the x3 direction, would be these cross terms, the two threes out like that. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then, then you can, if, you, if it works for the two direction, it also works in the one direction, and you cross out those. So, yeah, so I shouldn't have crossed the one twos, but anything with a one and a three or a two and a three get canceled. And then that leaves me with this third. And then, then the next thing is I'm going to say that all the inertia terms are negligible because the motion is slow. So then I'm just left with this last equation. So I just have that guy, and I, then I can integrate this in the x3 direction, and we'll say that the body force in the 3 direction is minus gravity, and so then we have an equation. So in other words, density is a function of x3, the distance into the, into the board, or in the, down, rather, times gravity integrated over however distance. That gives us the stress. And so this, this tells us two things. These assumptions we've made here about no shear stress and no inertia tells us that S3 is a principal stress because it's the only stress left with a three component in it. Right? And your stress, your stress always have to, your principal stresses are always orthogonal. So there has to be at least one stress that has some component in the x3 direction, because you have three principal directions, and they have to be orthogonal to each other. And so if, if any component has to be in the three direction, the fact that there's only one term left, and it's in the 3-3, three, three, which basically means straight down, right, 
that means that straight down is a principal direction. S33 is a principal stress, and we often call it the vertical stress, right? Because, and, and we, can, we can estimate it by this, right? So if we know a density as a function of depth, and we know gravity, then we can estimate what the vertical stress is always. So we know one of the principal stresses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you go back to the original, when I drove the original free body diagram and where I put my coordinate system on, I, I drew, when I derived these equations, I just drew B to be up. It doesn't really matter. It's just a sign convention of how I derived equations. I could have derived them, I could have derived them the, up, the opposite way. Yeah, but when I, when I derived these equations, I assumed that these were positive. So we know one of the principal directions is always down. And because they're orthogonal, that means the other two are in the plane of the Earth, right? So, so they have to be orthogonal. One of them is down. The other two are somewhere in the plane of the Earth. In other words, they're not, you know, they're not tilted like that or anything like that. If one of them is down, the other two are in the plane of the Earth. So S33 is a principal stress. We often call it the vertical stress, SV. And so we need four things to describe the state of stress in the Earth. The vertical stress magnitude, which we can estimate. If we have, if we have some idea of the density, we can estimate that. SH max, so the other two are in the, in the horizontal plane, right? So now we call those SH, or horizontal, the horizontal stresses, right? The maximum, SH max, right? The minimum, SH min. So we have SH max and SH min. I think this is often, in Zoback's book, there's a, it's a lowercase h for SH min. Probably, a, I just made a typo there. Because I think it, elsewhere in my notes, I use a smaller h, too. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. So we have, these are the three principal stresses. The vertical stress, the two horizontal stresses, which we define max and min. And then we need one horizontal principal direction. This is usually the direction associated with sh max. And that's because that's the easiest one to measure via essentially, you know, in the, in the field. It's the, it, and usually these are done by, actually, we'll talk about it later in the class, but these are, you can, you can infer the, the direction of SH max by actually conducting little mini hydraulic fractures experiments, if you will. So these are not for stimulation, but just to diagnose the direction of SH max, we can propagate a hydraulic fracture, and because reasons we'll learn, uh, they will propagate in the direction of SH max. And so then we can identify it. So we know then, if we do one of these little tests, we'll know the direction of SH max. We know SV is down. And we know the principal stresses must be orthogonal. So then we know all three of them, right? So then we know all three directions. And then we just need the, the three magnitudes. And we can completely characterize the state of stress in the Earth. Yeah? Well, again, it's from a diagnostic test, and because of some mechanics we'll understand soon, we know that when you do these little mini fracks or leak off tests, that the hydraulic fractures grow in the direction of SH max. So if we know what that direction is, and you can, you can view that in a televiewer and well logging, you can see which direction the, the, those are growing, then you can identify the direction of SH max. And then you know that direction. You know down is the other principal stress. And so then uh, you can form a, a right-handed coordinate system and determine what the other principal stress is. Yeah. So um, yeah, we'll stop there. <laughs>